Hey guys, it is Patrick here and I wanted you to know before you dive right into this accounting information systems lesson that the accompanied worksheet is available for download if you head to my website at www.patricklymsa.com or I'll leave the link directly to that worksheet down in the description below. Click on that, download the worksheet and print it out and that way you can follow along the accounting information systems lecture that I'm about to teach. So it has all the notes that I'm going to be going over. All you need to do is write your notes and fill in those blanks. So make sure you do that. And here is your AIS lesson. Hey guys, in this section, we are giving you an overview of the topics that we are going to be learning in accounting information systems. Now, every time I teach a course and we talk about section one, section one is one of those uh, dumb sections in which we're going to basically give you a sample tasting of what you're going to be learning in this entire course. Now, what stinks about doing that is we are going to teach you some topics or some theory, um, and we're going to give you kind of this, you know, high level understanding of it, but, and you're going to have to learn it, but in order to really conceptualize it and understand it, you're gonna be missing some key things because we're just giving you a sample of what you need to know rather than everything that you need to know. So as you go through this section, you might find it a little bit um, maybe not congruent. Uh, maybe you're gonna find you know one lesson doesn't really tie to another lesson and that's okay. Remember that as you're going through this section, we're trying to give you a little bit of a taste of what you're going to be learning all course long. So there are some things that are going to be talked about in, you know, this lesson that we'll talk about in section two and maybe three. There may be some things in the next lesson that you're going to find or um, you're, we're going to expand upon in sections five and six. And so um, you may feel a little bit confused as you go through the section, but that is because we're trying to give you a little bit of taste of every little thing that we are going to touch on in this course. Now, in this lesson specifically, we're going to go through some basic understanding of accounting information systems. Specifically, we're going to talk a little bit about definitions and key terms and some of the theoretical topics underpinning accounting information systems. So let's get started by just kind of uh, giving you a warning about this section. So this section is a preview of what this course will teach you in accounting information systems. We are gonna be looking at a lot of definitions and conceptual understanding topics. So remember to sometimes step back and understand what's going on or why am I being exposed to this topic as it relates to the entire system as a whole. Now, talking about system, let's get to our first kind of definition here we have is a system. So what is a system? Because frankly, accounting information systems has the word systems in its title. So a system is a set of two or more interrelated components that interact to achieve a goal. So, you know, it's we've got two interrelated whatevers, and I say whatevers because it really can be whatever. We have two interrelated whatevers that are working to the same goal. So for instance, if you've played on a soccer team and you have two players that are kicking the ball from um, one to another, they're both interrelated because they're on the same team and they're all striving for the same goal, which is to get that ball into the goal net of the opponent or even broadly speaking for that team to be able to win that game or that match. And so we've got two players that is that is interrelated to each other to achieve a certain goal, that would technically be a system. Now in accounting, that's not what we're talking about, but that is what a system is. A set of two or more interrelated components that interact to achieve a goal. Now from an accounting standpoint or a business standpoint, it might look something like this. So we've got a corporation and within the corporation, we have all of these different departments. We've got the operations department, we've got the sales and marketing department, We've got the accounting and finance department, and then we've got human resources. Now we might have six or seven other more departments, but let's just, you know, our core here, we've got four departments here within this corporation. 
and they're all working together. So each component in this example is assisting the company in achieving their goal, which is to create shareholders value by operating a profitable business. So this would be a system. We've got these subsystems, operations, um, sales and marketing, accounting and finance, human resources, they're all working together. They're interrelated. They have got a goal in mind. Typically that goal is to assist the corporation in doing what it needs to do. In this case, creating shareholder value by operating a profitable business at the end of the day. So this would be a modern day AIS system, or I wouldn't even say AIS, I would say MIS, Management Information System. This is a modern day management information system. It's a system because you've got interrelated components that are working together to achieve a goal. Now, remember that a system doesn't necessarily mean technology. So all of these are connected probably by technology, but even if we didn't have technology, you probably would have someone in the accounting department talking to someone in the human resources department or talking to someone in the sales and marketing, and that may not even require any technology other than you maybe walking to their office and discussing an uh, a task or an activity that both your departments are working on. So understand at the end of the day, technology uh, that a system doesn't have to be technology driven. Now, when we talk about the subsystems and their goals, as well as the corporation's goals, we have to understand that maybe not all goals are in sync with each other. So it's important for each subsystem to understand how their operations affect the entire organization as a whole because they're all striving for the same goal at the end of the day. Now, their internal goals might be different, but overall, the corporate goal should be the same. So goals of each subsystem can either be goal congruent or goal conflict. So what is goal congruent? Goal, goal congruent means that when a subsystem achieves its goal, that achievement also contributes to the overall goal of the corporation. So, you know, if whatever the accounting and marketing or accounting department is doing, whatever they're doing, when they meet a goal, maybe it's a reduction in expenses by two and a half percent, that's going to uh, contribute to the overall goal of the corporation, which might be to increase shareholders value by decreasing costs and increasing profit at the end of the day. Well, if the accounting department does their job, they are assisting the entire system in doing their job, which is increasing the profit margin or increasing the shareholder value at the end of the day. We also have situations where we have these, what we call goal conflicts. Goal conflicts is when a subsystem achieves its goal, that achievement doesn't really contribute to the overall organizational goals. So we wanna be careful there. So when we talk about, let's say sales and marketing, maybe sales and marketing um, every year takes all of their salespeople out on a very expensive cruise, no matter if they hit their goal or not. And so the goal is to have a party. So they go out and have a party, but sales are down 20%. Well, having that party doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually achieving a goal that helps the organization as a whole. Frankly, that actually might dissuade that goal at the end of the day. So we wanna make sure that whatever our subsystems are doing, each subsystem or in you know, our case here department, each department is achieving their goal. As they achieve their goal, hopefully those goals are helping the entire unit or the entire system achieve their goals at the end of the day because we're all working for the same thing at the end of the day. Now, understanding data information. So in all of this course, all of this course is based is based on data and information. What do we do with data and what do we do with information or how do we get information? So the relationship between data and information is an important one, especially when it comes to an accountant's role in an accounting information systems. So the first thing that you should know is that we've got data. So at the end of the day, we always start with data. So what is data? These are facts that are collected, recorded, stored, and processed by an information system. So the very first step in an accounting information system is to collect data. So we've got this data, this raw data at the end of the day. And then we have something called information. So what is information? So information is organized data that becomes meaningful and useful for the user. Keyword here in this definition is 
uh, organize data. So really information, all that really is at the end of the day is taking this data and purposing it in an organized manner so that we can create this organized data that we can give to a user of that data so that they can make better decisions. Now, when we organize the data in a certain way that makes it more useful to the decision maker, that's called information. So information is organized, organized data that becomes meaningful and useful for the user. So kind of a pictorial view of this, you know, in an AIS system, we take a data, we put it into the accounting system or accounting information system, and then our output would be information at the end of the day. Now, if we go back to financial accounting, financial accounting would look something like this. We take the source document, that would be our data. We put that in to a transaction or a gap transaction. And those gap transactions are organized and summarized into financial statements, which is what is useful to the external user at the end of the day. So when we think about data information, we as accounts are trying to collect data for the information system. And then we're gonna use something, accounting, as a way to organize that data so that we're able to provide information to external users or internal users who might need that information to make better decisions within the organization. So understanding this is what we're trying to do in, account, in accounting information systems. We're trying to take data, put it into something called accounting and specifically accounting information systems and then spit out information in the form of whatever reporting or um, yeah, whatever reporting that we have for the users of that data. Now it's important to know that when we do this, we have something called information overload. And I probably have already overloaded you with information in this 11 minute uh, lesson here, but well, you're a college student, so just get over it and absorb it. So information overload. This occurs when information's uh, being provided to a person exceeds that for which the individual can absorb and process. And I'll be the first one to tell you that I do this all the time with students is I overload them with information. The problem is I've got a lot of information to give and I'm just gonna give it to you and whatever you absorb, you're just going to absorb. So it's important that as we grab data and we put more data into the system, that we can provide information in many different ways, especially nowadays with technology. We've got a lot of technology that can do a lot of cool things, but at the end of the day, it could provide what we call information overload to the external users who are using the information that we provide from an accounting information system. Now the problem with information overload is it does lead to a decline in decision-making quality and typically increases the cost of providing uh, information. It's kind of like, you know, and I, you know, I'm the perfect example of this. In order to make a decision or a major decision, I want all the information that I can. The problem with doing that is when I get all of this information, now I have more reasons to be skeptical about should I do this or should I do that when it comes to a decision. So the more information that we have, we start to second guess ourselves on what we should do. This is also what has made Costco very successful. Costco, if you notice, when you go in, they don't have four or five different types of, let's say, Tylenol. They have one size, one brand. Tylenol, maybe it's the 500 count Tylenol bottle. That's it. They may have another one, but usually it's like one item or two items and at, at the most. Versus if you go to Walmart, you might have 15 different ways Tylenol is given. Well, why does Costco only offer one or two versus Walmart who, uh, who offers 15? Because when you're at Costco and you see two options or even one option, then it's very easy for you to make that decision and buy more. You literally have one option there, one bottle of Tylenol, 500 count. You either are going to get it or you're not gonna get it. And for someone who's shopping, it's a very easy decision for them because they don't have to choose. They know they need the Tylenol, they're just gonna pick up the Tylenol, they can make more money that way. So we have to be, we have to understand that information overload can lead to poor decision making on the aspect of the person who's using it. So, you know, just like you walking into a Costco, you've got one option and that's your only option. So you're gonna go for it, which basically leads to um, 
leads to more revenues for Costco versus maybe Walmart. So again, super important as we think about data and information in this course. Now we've talked about information technology. I've actually talked about it a lot so far in the first two lessons here. So within the system of manipulating data into information, we can use information technology to expedite the conversion of data into information. So if you really think about it, you know, think about um, if you had to do journal entries, then posting, and then summarization, and then financial statements all by hand, like no technology, no QuickBooks, no um, uh, Sage, no uh, Intact, none of all of these technology platforms that we have to produce financial statements, you have to do it by pen and paper. Well, it would take a long time. You'd probably get to the same result as a computer. You know, if you were accurate, you'd probably do all, all right. But information technology has allowed us to speed up that process so that we're more efficient and we're more effective in how we report data at the end of the day. So it's a very important tool that we have. What is information technology? Well, these are computers and other electronic devices used to store, retrieve, transmit, and manipulate data. Remember, a system doesn't always need information technology. However, when we talk about information technology, it usually involves those computers and that technology piece. But again, a system doesn't always need information technology. Now, the last kind of thing that we're gonna talk about here as we end, uh, end this first lesson here in this section is the value of information. So we all, we've talked a lot about cost versus benefit in your principles of accounting class. Um, it's important to understand that that still applies here. The benefit provided by users minus the cost of producing the information is the value of that information. What's the value? It's the difference between the benefit that we get from getting that information and the cost to obtain that information is that value information. So in the end, information must be useful to the decision maker. If it's not useful to the decision maker, then maybe we don't need to do that analysis. Maybe we don't need that report. Maybe we don't even need to collect the data at the end of the day. So it's important that whatever we're doing in our AI system, as much as we can manipulate and do things cool with our accounting information systems, especially from a technology piece, we have to understand whether or not does it provide value to that end user. If it doesn't, let's go ahead and maybe not do it if it does, let's make sure that the cost doesn't outweigh the information that we provide to that decision maker. So that is a look here at understanding some of the basic concepts of accounting information systems. Again, I wouldn't call this necessarily your foundation of AIS. This is more of a speckle sample of what we are talking about in this entire course. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you're looking for the next lesson, make sure you hit up that lesson right over here. And if you are looking for the entire accounting information systems course, make sure you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com where I have the full AIS course available to you. So until next time, we'll see you in the next video.